What is up, YouTube? If you clicked on this video, you're actually going to be prepared with some bad news because it turns out, um, obviously, we are one day out from Harseti coming out yesterday. And through a lot of testing and mock battles and in some of the defenses that we set up, um, I got to break it to you, but Harseti actually kind of sucks uh, in defense for forts and strongholds. If you're a small tower, uh, she definitely has a bit more versatility in terms of how you want to trap um, you know, a person attacking. But for a big tower or a, a stronghold, she's not very good. And I'm going to get into the reasons why in just a moment. Uh, but if you guys do enjoy the Guild War defense videos, please drop a like and comment as always. And let's jump straight into Harseti only defenses. Let's go. So super quick, I wanted to talk about some of the defenses that we have set up at the moment, uh, including Harseti. And I ran Harseti Shoe Kennedy, and it's not very good, right? They go double cleanse, Atai AOL, plus a DPS. I can beat your DPS, and you're basically dead in the water. And you can see this happen in all of our forts that we tried running since I wanted to get some more information from the previous video. And you can see here, right, Atai AOL, Atai AOL, and it's basically just free farm, right? Uh, same concept on the top tower. Now, the only shields that they did get is if they didn't go Atai AOL, right? So... If you're in the lower rank and you do want to use a Harseti defense like this, where, you know, maybe people won't have all of the ML5s and stuff, then, you know, it might be possible. But definitely if you're in the higher ranks where you're like top 30, top 50, top 100 and above, I highly don't think that uh, Harseti should be used in a fort. So I'll break into some other comps, but I want to explain a bit more of the philosophy in just a second. So let's go over there. So what makes Harseti actually good on defense? Right, she has the ability to strip all buffs because she decreases buff duration by two turns, and obviously, if you have immunity, um, it's going to get reduced and it's going to get stripped, and you're unable to be buffed, which is great. Two debuffs, which is awesome, and the fact that the uh, unbuffable actually sticks on the right side. So if you ever run something like a Taiwan into Harseti, the unbuffable is always going to make it so that he doesn't get rage, so that he can't you know ignore effect resistance to basically uh, stun D break you. Right, mind you, of course, there's things like fifteen percent, but in a perfect world where we assume that fifteen percent doesn't occur, then the unable to be buffed is actually a really good counter into the a Taiwan. Now, uh, what else makes her kit kind of strong? So if anybody runs a normal you know, their normal units, you know, they don't know how fast your Harseti is, right? So they could be either be up or down a hundred gear score at any given moment when they're attacking a Harseti defense, which is what gives her so much versatility. If she limits everybody's speed on the field, you're able to squeeze out a lot more gear score over your enemy's comp, potentially, right? If they don't move all their gear around and stuff like that, uh, then you have that leeway to kind of use that to your advantage to abuse the gear score factor to try to gear gap people. The S1, I won't really say too much about because the S1, if Harseti is going to be dropping an S1, I mean, they probably already lost the the, the, the attack, right? You should be winning the defense uh, or the, the battle in the first rotation uh, with your other two units. Otherwise, the comp probably falls apart. And the reason why she's not that great into forts is because as soon as one person hits it, and assuming that you're actually you know collaborating as a guild, once they know what's the rotation of your units, they can run a different comp and you're completely cleared. Right in forts and stronghold settings, you want to run comps where you're able to, you know, gear gap them, add other layers of RNG, uh, things like you know, dodge BBK, counter BBK, counter a Taiwan, Elbrus a Taiwan, stuff like that, where you're actually able to be extremely disruptive and have your best gear on your units to gear gap them. Similarly to the defenses that you saw in the previous video, like the Sea Phantom Poly Belly and BBKs or the Konk, um, Yufin, Illinavs of the world, right? Those are the kind of defense that you want to strive for in those fort settings. Um, but assuming you're watching this video and you are a small tower, I highly recommend you pay attention because I'm going to give you guys a bunch of different comps that you can try in your own defense and try to get those shields. So let's go right ahead. So the first Harseti defense that's going to net you a ton of wins against that Atai AOL comp is going to be Harseti Senya Lolius. Now, your Harseti you're going to want to run with is just going to be a standard Harseti with as much effectiveness as possible on the Magic Bubble Maker. If you don't have Magic Bubble Maker, you can go for Abyssal Crown or Curse Compass to get yourself as much effectiveness as possible to land those debuffs. Even something like Sierra Ren I could see being usable as well. Shout out to NATO. Uh, the second unit that's the most important in this comp is going to be Fire Lilius. Now, Fire Lilius is so important for one reason, right? The one reason is because... Her S2 ability actually allows you to 
uh, provoke a unit when they use a non-attack skill. So if they ever were to run Atai AOL into this, you're able to provoke lock that AOL so that they're not going to be able to um, drop an S3 um, after they do the S2 cleanse for skill nullifier, right? And the most important thing is you want to have her on a full damage build with some effectiveness so that you have the ability of landing on an AOL, say, for example, if they have like, you know, 100 ER or something like that, right? Uh, or 150 or whatever. If they have a hybrid build, you're covered in that sense of having that effectiveness by investing the gear score onto that build since you don't even want to overcap uh, the 350 crit damage, right? And... Uh, one other unit, or the last unit we're going to be running is going to be Green Senya, who's going to be on speed immunity. The tuning is quite important in this comp because you're going to need to ensure that it's uh, Harseti goes into Senya, goes into Lilius. So the Lilius EE uh, is going to be on the damage EE, not on the 20% CR push EE. The Senya can be uh, tweaked with a bunch of different artifacts, right? So when you look at this comp, you might be thinking, oh, you know, you could probably just Zeo cleave that or, you know, Zeo. Um, or Luna this comp or whatever. Um, not, well, if you start getting Luna by this, you can run the Holy Sack, Proof of Valor on your Senya or on your Lilius. Um, personally, I would swap this over to like a Holy Sacrifice and then switch your Fire Lilius over to something like a Proof of Valor so that you're able to uh, farm some of those cleavers that are really greedy, right? Run something like a POV so that you don't die, go self imprint, get more bulk um, since you're going to be killing a lot of squishy units. Um, that'll be a, a good alternative if you do notice that, say, you start getting Luna cleaved, then you can swap into something else, right? Uh, so this is the first variation I would say I would say is the best variation against the Atai AOL comp. Uh, I'll move into the next comp that you guys can copy. The next Harseti comp is going to be Harseti, Broman, and BBK. Now, Harseti is going to be on, again, the common theme is just any effectiveness, whatever speed you want to run on Harseti, just make sure the other two units are going to be tuned closely behind her. Uh, obviously, on Magic Bubble Maker, as I mentioned, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but obviously, you guys already know what artifacts you can go for Abyssal Crown, Curse Compass, things like that. Then, our second unit that's the most important one is going to be Broman in this comp. And Broman is going to be looking to do the. Um, you can do either S3 EE or you can do the Combat Readiness EE. It really is up to you, it, it, it really doesn't matter. Um, but I personally would go for the this S2 EE just so that if they do decide to run some kind of comp like Zeo, they probably wouldn't. Um, but in the case that they did, um, at least you're covered in that regard. Now, you want to make sure that you are, you know, about like 12 speed, 10 speed behind the Harseti so that you're not in the within speed RNG range. Um, but to be honest, um, Harseti obviously goes first, right? So as you already know, like it, it doesn't matter what speed Broman is as long as he is outside the speed RNG of your DPS. So we want to have it on a high effectiveness build. Again, Magic Bubble Maker just makes it so that you have a lot more debuffs. And before I even talk about the DPS, why is Broman so good here, right? Now, Broman is really awesome because if they do decide to run double cleanse like the Atai AOL, if your Broman goes before them, you're going to be landing the silence, the defense breaks. You have a bunch of debuffs coming in from Magic Bubble Maker, number one. Number two, if they decide to go hand guys Sweet Miracle, which is basically the only way you're able to cleanse off a of Broman because the silence is for two turns, compared to something say like a Laia, right? Where if she's silenced for that extra turn, she can't S2. So Hand Guy on Sweet Miracle would automatically lose as well, potentially, if they run that as a cleanser, because if the Hand Guy goes first and then the Broman S3s and strips the Hand Guy, you're basically dead, right? The BBK is going to be coming after you and you're just absolutely washed. Now, um, this unit on, the, on third doesn't have to be BBK. Um, it could be... You know, RB, it could be any AoE DPS, but you want to have Destro Torrent on the BBK. Um, another great alternative is having a counter BBK that's on Shepherd of Chaos. If you don't know what that artifact is, it actually gives you 40% evasion, basically. It's a Hall of Trials artifact, which I don't have, which is why we're running the Shepherd of the Hollow. Uh, but the EE that you're going to want to run on the BBK is going to be the Immortality EE. And similar to the uh, the first video that we made for Harseti, is you want to have Harseti, Death Break, AoE DPS, and it just causes a lot of trouble for the opposing team. Um, and just give that a try and let me know what you guys think. So that's all. Let's go. Now, last but not least, we're going to be running a Harseti variation where we're trying to trap Zeo. So you want to make your defense look really cleavable. And something like a BBK Harseti is, it looks pretty cleavable because you could run like Zeo Veronica plus one or Zeo... Uh, Zeo Requiem Rowana plus one, and it's going to be really easy to trap. So on Harseti, we're not going to be running with any effectiveness. We're going to be going on POV, basically just um, Detraction set. If you have a really good Lifesteal set, you could run Lifesteal instead. I don't, so I just opted to go for Destro so that I have more damage. 
my A Tywin is going to be on Protection Set and on Immunity. Uh, we don't really care too much about the speed because obviously Harsetti is going to limit our speed. We would just want to make sure that our Protection Set is getting as much value as possible so that we want to inflate our HP as much as possible on Aureus. And then our BBK is going to be on a counter build, which is what I kind of briefly talked about earlier in the video. But you want to be on a counter immunity build, and you also want to be on Shepherd of the Hollow, or if you, even better, Shepherd of Chaos. Again, the reason for that is because you have 40% chance evasion on Shepherd of Chaos. On Shepherd of the Hollow, you have 20% evasion chance. You have the immunity so that if they do rip a Requiem Roana, for example, you have that opportunity of basically resisting or dodging. Right, same thing if they run something like a Veronica, right? After Zeo goes, Veronica pushes forward. Then what can happen is if they go S3, you can dodge as well, and you have that immunity as another check so that they don't have the free way of just basically landing a bomb and stunning you and just CC locking the BBBK, right? And I think uh, this is a really great option in even like higher ends of Guild War because if you're trapping for Zeo, it makes it really frustrating because some people that might want to cleave and get things over with really quickly. <clears throat> Xarian, um, it's really easy to trap them, right? <laughs> so I think these are all pretty good options and definitely give this a try. But uh, this is probably one of my favorites because this is the most overcooked one. So what makes Candy so good along with Harsetti? Is it because she's good in anti-cleave? No, Candy is really good because everyone's speed is so low because of Harsetti's S2 passive, right? So Harsetti is just going to be on an F build. Again, as you guys have seen multiple times, Magic Bubble Maker. The supporting cast is going to be the Empyrean Emma Elenav here because she allows us to run units. Uh, she she uh, disables people from running units like Gala that requires pen, right? And she can be built with really high HP and have some decent chip damage. And she gets injury in her kit, which is really good into light units. Or sorry, dark units. Bastion of Pollution is going to be your artifact of choice. Our last unit is going to be Candy. Candy's going to be on a Destro Torrent build on Elbrus. You could go Holy Sack if you want, but I think you're probably going to want to go on Elbrus, basically because you have no other way of countering. So the whole idea behind here is if they do decide to run any type of team that has LCB to try to kill your Candy quick, you guys are basically at the same speed. You're going to be outputting way more damage than they're able to tank and survive. And the Bastion of Pelusha Shield is going to be so strong um, from the Empyrean Ilanav, it's just going to be really hard for them to deal with. And if they just get, if you get one salvo and you get two turns on the candy, there's a pretty good chance that they're just going to die. And mind you, the ML Ilanav, if you guys don't remember, she is going to also be able to drop a bunch of injury onto that dark unit that you're going to be targeting, right? So it's going to be really, really strong when you pair these two together. So I highly suggest you guys don't just think about it from the perspective where you're running candy to just be anti-cleave. Think about it from the perspective where you can actually be a bit more greedy on the build in packing in way more damage compared to normal by abusing the fact that everyone has a similar speed as you. Obviously, you want to have your Arsetti as close to the candy as possible for full optimization. But this is definitely a comp that I highly suggest because... A lot of people are not going to be expecting a high power Landy uh, behind the Harsetti. Now, last but not least, we're going to be going with another Harsetti comp, obviously, as per the video, but we're going to be running an Alencia variation instead. So, having Harsetti with Alencia is pretty interesting um, so far in our test because the Alencia can be run on triple HP gear. And when you're triple HP gear on Sweet Miracle, so that you can kind of cycle out of any potential seals or silence or provokes or stuns from, say, a Tywin or Luna or stuff like that, um, you're going to be almost like 40k HP, right? So, A, you're already going to be really hard to kill. B, you're going to be stacking injury and you're going to be doing a ton of damage at this HP threshold. And she's just going to be a complete nuisance to deal with uh, when you're having this on your defense team. Now, the candy over here is going to be on like a standard counter immunity build similar to like RTA. So anything on Elbrus is fine. You don't really want to go for Holy Sack, I think, but you could give it a try if you want. Uh, Mature Sunglasses deserves a nice shout out as well. And the whole concept behind this is if you have just Harsetti Alencia, you kind of want to have another unit that, you know, protects you from, you know, anti-cleave, right? And at this HP threshold, she can tank a Gala S3. Obviously, the, the ca candy is allowed to potentially Elbrus and just cause a lot of havoc for enemy team. Um, so give this one a try because with any high HP scaling bruisers like Alencia or Ravi or Shu, um, anyone that can carry a Sweet Miracle will be really good so that it can cycle out of those debuffs in the case that they decide to run for that. That is going to conclude our Harsetti only Guild War defense video. Uh, you guys seem to really like these, so I'll try to do these more often, especially with all the new units coming into play next month. 
uh, with the balance patch. Obviously, Mort seems really interesting, so I can't wait to cook with him. Um, and let me know in the comments what you guys think of all the comps that I put in this video. I really look forward to seeing your guys' thoughts uh, every video that I post. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great long weekend. Bye!